Bob Hope and his special guest, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Thank you. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob, so they hit the moon with Radar Hope. You can see for me. I went down to Palm Springs last week, and they really have a housing shortage down there. In fact, I saw one ad in the paper that read for rent. $50 a month, a size 38 shadow. <laughs> Palm Springs is really wonderful, isn't it? In one week, you get healthy enough to go back to work and poor enough to have to. And it's so ritzy, the snakes in that part of the desert don't have rattles, and back they have built-in recorders that play nothing but Castellanos. <laughs> what prices the hotels get? I stepped up to the clerk and asked him if he could give me a suite for $5, and he handed me a Hershey bar. <laughs> You should have seen the hotel I stopped at. What a place. There was a sign in the room, don't turn off the electric fan, it's holding up the walls. <laughs> what a broken down room. The only time it had a ceiling was when a low cloud went by. <laughs> but I finally got a beautiful room with a very high ceiling, except when the elevator came down. <laughs> and it's so hot down at Bomb Springs, one lens fell out of my smoke glasses and my right eye got burned black. For a week, I walked around looking like an overgrown panda. Panda, you know, he has one white eye and one white eye. And my lens fell, you know. And, uh, the last time I buy a gag from the Griffith Park Zoo, I want to tell you that. While I was in Palm Springs, those jet planes passed over on their way to New York. And I don't know if they were traveling fast enough to create a vacuum, but ten acres of tumbleweed followed them as far as Iowa. <laughs> I'm not saying they went fast, but the pilots got the hiccups. He hicked in Salt Lake City and cupped over Chicago. <laughs> when they landed, my sponsor sent me a wire reading. This shows you what hot air will do if you direct it right. <laughs> planning a trip, come down to Tempico Way, those lovely tropical scenes will make you want to stay. Hi, Tempico, Tempico, on the Gulf of Mexico, Tempico, Tempico, that's the way to go. You lose your troubles and care when you fiesta each day, and soon you're happy to live the Pan American way. Tampico, Tampico, on the Gulf of Mexico. Tampico, Tampico, that's the place to go. There are no strangers down there. It's all a big family because they greet you with their good neighbor policy. Senoritas down there are sentimental and shy, and once they whisper hello, you'll never say goodbye. Hi, Tampico, Tampico, on the Gulf of Mexico, Tampico, Tampico, that's the place to go. You learn to rumba down there with Estherita McPhail, who learned to do it last week from Arthur Murray by mail. Hi, Tampico, Tampico, on the Gulf of Mexico. Tampico, Tampico, that's the place to go. The senoritas, they wave when you arrive at the dock. The native costumes they wear are slacks and bobby socks. <laughs> In Tampico, in Mexico. That 
favorite dream of mine has just come true. I'm glad I waited for you. I waited for you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet a fine young singer who recently returned from a trip back east. If you had good eyesight, you saw him in Anchors Away. <laughs> the original Thin Man, one of the greatest guys who almost lived, Andy Russell's grandfather, Frank Sinatra. Right now. <laughs> Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Bob. Well, I'm glad to see you, Frank. You're looking as strong and handsome as ever. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. And you're looking as intelligent and as sophisticated as ever. Boy, is television going to louse up this program. <laughs> Tell me, Frankie, how was your trip east? Wonderful, Bob. I flew, you know. Made it in 12 hours. Gee, that's pretty good time. Yes, it is, considering that I had to stop at Albuquerque to change pigeons. <laughs> But you know, uh, Bob, I had a small accident. I had to bail out of that. You, you had to bail out? What happened? Well, when we got over Denver, the pigeon hit a downdraft and the recoil threw me off. <laughs> you feel a little kick on that last one? Say, you really, uh, you really covered a lot of territory back there. Yeah. Tell me, are the hotel rooms still scarce in New York? <clears throat> huh? Still scarce? Well, I took a ride down Riverside Drive. So what? So nothing. General Grant was sitting on a park bench and getting ten bucks a day for renting out his tomb. <laughs> Well, you must have felt right at home in there. No, Bob. You see, I stay... Wait a second. <laughs> oh, Frank, read the cues. Wait for laugh. Right there. I lost my head. I'll wait. <laughs> lost my laugh. Bob, uh, I, you see, I stayed with my folks over in Hoboken. I'm from the north, you know. Yeah. That's my hometown. <laughs> I went to grammar school there. I'll bet you were the spitball champion, huh? <laughs> Not me. The other kids threw the spitballs. Well, how come you didn't throw them? Well, they used to wrap me up inside and let me do the steering. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, just think, Frank, only a few years ago we were both living on the wrong side of the tracks and here we are today. Next door neighbors in North Hollywood. Uh-huh. So you're the guy that lives next door to me. Yeah, what about it? Bob, then must you raise sheep? <laughs> that isn't the reason, Frankie. I'm doing all of Lana Turner's knitting now. My invocation. Say, Robin, I got a complaint to make, though. What about? Well, I can't understand that dog of yours. Look, I've been living there for months, and he still barks at me when he sees me laying around the yard. Doesn't he like me? Oh, it isn't that, Frankie. It's just that he's never seen a bone with a bow tie on it before. <laughs> you may hit my lawyer, boy. <laughs> Frank, that's a nice-looking house you live in, and that's a nice driveway you have there, too. Yeah, of course, quite a bit, but it's worth it. Yeah, that was a good idea, surfacing it with Crush Crosby records. <laughs> By the way, Frank, uh, have you seen old Butterbeam lately? <laughs> yeah, I've seen Mount Ball. They ran across <laughs> Bing in New York. Really? What else is doing in the Bowery? But, uh, Frank, <laughs> it's a good thing you're back in Hollywood now. You know, while you're away, a certain actor has been taking over some of your bobby sock business and has them squealing for him. Really? What's the name of this hijacker? Oh, you've heard the name. Van Johnson. Van, Van Johnson, Van... What is that, a movie actor or a trucking company? Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding? That's a charm school with freckles. <laughs> oh, sure, I heard about him, Bob. Say, tell me, what's the secret of Van's charm, anyway? Well, let's ask Frances. Frances, come here. She's got all the inside. Yeah, the outside ain't bad, either. <laughs> Hey, Francis, will you step in here? I want you to settle a question between me and Frankie. Gee, is it really Frank Sinatra? In the flesh. <laughs> Stop bragging. <laughs> Why, Frank, I didn't know you were coming down here tonight. Neither did I, Francis. Been windy, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
You know, Francis, you should see more of me. Well, I'd like to. Where'd you leave it? Nice work, kid. Oh, you do Francis, Frank has something to ask you. Yeah, Francis, I, I want a kind of quick reaction. To be blunt, who do the girls like better, me or Van Johnson or me? <laughs> Well, it's hard to say. The girls really go wild over Van's golden hair. What do you mean, golden hair? All he got was an egg shampoo, and they forgot to comb out the yolk. <laughs> oh, you two are just jealous because you don't have a cute cowlick like Van. I had a cowlick like that once. Well, why doesn't your hair stand up on end? That is where the cow licked me. <laughs> That is it where the cow licked me. <laughs> Gee whiz, my records are still selling big. Why do I stand here reading this junk when I got now, money wait in the bag? <laughs> what do you mean, junk? I use nothing but sophisticated material. No yeah. powered leftovers. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> Well, to me, it's still junk. Oh, yeah? If you're going to get tough, put up your dukes. Okay, I got enough. Start something. Okay, take that. <laughs> 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 Stop. Why, Francis, you afraid we'll hurt each other? No, but the sound man is getting awful tired. <laughs> Did you leave a call? Come on, take a Come here, And say. She takes the winter and makes it summer. Summer could say some lessons from her. Picture a tomboy in lace. That's Nancy with a laughing face. Have you ever heard mission bells ringing? Well, she'll give you the very same glow. When she speaks, you would think it was singing. Just hear her say, hello. I swear to goodness. You can't resist her Sorry for you She has no sister No angel could replace Nancy with a laughing face Betty Grable, Lamour, and Turner. She makes my heart a charcoal burner. It's heaven when I embrace Nancy with a laugh and say. That's 
fine, Frank. Sit down and rest. We get some oxygen. Here comes Frank. Folks, we're going to take a little excursion into the land of fantasy and bring you as weird and chilling a ghost story as you ever heard. We're going to do the life of Frank Sinatra. <laughs> if you will, Mr. Ennis. Life of Frank Sinatra. We take you back to the fateful night of June 8, 1919. A fateful night indeed. Because on that night, nothing happened. <laughs> nothing happened, and they named it Frank Sinatra. <laughs> As the stork swooped low over the Sinatra home with his precious little bundle, he said, I better leave this and get away fast. They may have their hearts set on a baby. <laughs> so, little Frankie is born. And when Papa Sinatra comes home from work, he peeks at the thin figure and says happily, Ah, I see we're having spaghetti tonight. <laughs> but time marches on, and Frankie gets bigger, thanks to helium gas. <laughs> and even at that early age, his mother knew he was going to be very intelligent. When she looked down at the infant lying in his crib... Frankie would open his big blue eyes and say, Go, go, hey. <laughs> At the age of five, Frankie gets into his first fight with the kid next door. I give up. Don't hit me again. Don't hit me again. Okay, and let that be a lesson. <laughs> In school, Frank meets a young southern boy, Edgar Ennis. As boys will, they size each other up carefully, then speak. Hiya, Hiya Fatso. <laughs> All right, Chuck, now we'll start the base lesson. <laughs> hey, teacher, 
Ain't you going to call the roll? No, I got a quick away. Well, all those pupils who are wrapped someplace raised their hand. <laughs> See, every day, perfect attendance. The teacher's a moron. No wonder I'm an idiot. <laughs> Robert, hope you're a bad boy, and you're a bad influence on the rest of the children here in the fifth grade. How's that, teacher? Well, this is the second morning this week you come to class without a shave. <laughs> and another thing, Robert, take off that pointed dunce cap. What dunce cap? Hey, teach, that's his head, hey. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you fat as mustache. <laughs> hey, you mud as stuffed eggplant. <laughs> Hey, hey, your sister's tricycle wave. <laughs> yeah, and Francie Langford, you can stay after school today. But, teacher, why should I stay after school? I know all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Now, stop arguing with me. Ah, uh, your children are impossible. I've sent for a principal. Oh, watch this, Frankie. This ought to be fun. I rigged up a bucket of water over the door, and when the principal opens the door, it'll tip the bucket. Shh. Here he comes now. <laughs> Silly bee, started for the classroom and walked right into the swimming pool. <laughs> all right, children, let's all line up and have our little ears inspected now. All right, Frankie, step up here. Well, that ear's clean, and now for the other one. Frankie! What's the matter, Princey? Is it dirty? <laughs> oh, but where did you find a place to buy gum? <laughs> Who bought gum? That's the same piece I had there last week. <laughs> hey, uh, huh? <laughs> I just want to see if you left anything out. I <laughs> hey, Prince. Prince, I, I've got clean ears. Look behind them and see. Okay. Hmm, you have two clean ears. Now, let me look behind the other two. <laughs> hey, Principal, I got a question in arithmetic. Is the quadratic complex made up of coordinates to satisfy a homogeneous algebraic equation of degree two? Huh? I said... <laughs> Quadratic complex made up of corners to satisfy homogeneous. Out this puck is trying to clear my racket. <laughs> Eager for fame and fortune, Frank teams up with Bob Hope and goes into show business. We find Frank and Bob applying for their first job in a Hoboken nightclub. Frank, my new act will kill the people. Maybe so, Bob, but I think you should stick to just telling jokes. You do? Yeah, I don't think it'll look right, a man doing a bubble dance. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I move fast. I won't catch cold. <laughs> well, here's the place, Frank. Kelowna's Mickey Finn Inn. <laughs> Boy, what a tough-looking joint. What makes you think it's so tough? Well, just look at the hat check, girl. She's checking the hats with the heads in them. <laughs> hey, Bob. Bar, check your coat here. Check your coat. Don't stop, Frank. Walk right by. <laughs> now, how about your hat? <laughs> hey, look, Bob. Here comes the owner. Hey, mister. We're part of the new floor show. Sorry, I've got all the chorus girls I need. <laughs> Listen, we're not chorus girls. Take another look. Well, I don't need any scrub women either. Kelowna. Are you the boss here? That's right, Hope J. Billings of E. Kelowna. No liquor sold after hours, no gambling on the premises. Laws of the community observed to the letter. Also relatives Shanghai to China, cheap. Hey, look, Frank, there's a dead horse sitting at the bar. Dead horse sitting at the bar? Yeah. That's funny. He paid for a table. <laughs> Say, Kelowna. One minute, Hope, while I throw out this rowdy customer. All right, bub. Come on. Out you go. Come on, fellas, let me back in. <laughs> Say, Kelowna, do we get jobs in your floor show? Well, tell me, Hope, uh, what kind of an act do you do? Oh, I got a great act. I kill him. I come out the stage and I say, how do you do, folks? I call my dog Postman because he's expecting a litter. <laughs> he's expecting a litter. <laughs> it's my special delivery that gets on you, say. <laughs> you get a chance? Do <laughs> you think you can use my jokes? Why not? Most of our customers like an egg in their beer. <laughs> and now, uh, Sinatra, let's hear what you can do. Okay. 
It might as well be spring. It might as well be spring. It might as well be spring. Well, don't stand there. Let's plant them. <laughs> Got today for an angel, got me to seven, got a date for an angel, I'm on my way to heaven. She's so lovely to stop me, and whatever be taught me, got an angel to guide me, so I'm on my way to heaven. So the leather dogs ring out, and the choir will sing out, when the pearly gates ring out, oh, she'll beckon to me. I've been waiting a lifetime for this evening at seven. Got a date with an angel. I'm on my way to heaven. I've been waiting a lifetime for the evening of heaven. Got a date with an angel. I'm on my way to heaven. (laughs) 